Hey everyone, today we meet King Saul. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be ruler over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen the suffering of my people, because their outcry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He is who will rule over my people. Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him. He said, The Lord has anointed you ruler over his people Israel. You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of all their enemies around. Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near. When they looked for Saul, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, Did the man come here? And the Lord said, Look, he has hidden himself among the baggage. So uh, when I read this story, I almost wonder, is this the same God that we just heard the last couple of stories? All of a sudden, God seems very pro-king, very pro-Saul. Uh, this, this is the one who's going to save my people. I think this reminds us that the Bible is a conversation. And even in this book, there might be different traditions that are speaking with each other about how good a king is or, or how bad it is. Uh, but if we're just going to read what we have here in the canon, it's really saying that God is all in. Right? It wasn't God's idea to have a king, but God is committed to it. Uh, God is not just setting them up to fail. Right? There's some bad theology that think God is just manipulating things so that we'll make mistakes and then we'll have to have God fix it. I don't think that's a good way to think about what God's doing. But here we're seeing that, that God is with Saul, and we see other places where it talks about God giving him another heart, right? somehow changing who he is. We'll talk tomorrow about when God gives him the Spirit. Saul is anointed here by Samuel, this powerful symbol of being given uh, authority and power. And as we see, God's going to use him to save his people. That's a story we'll have tomorrow as well. But the question is, is Saul up to the task? Right? I mean, it's it's kind of funny here, right? It is public inauguration. Nobody can find him because he's hiding in the baggage and God has to kind of tell on him. In some ways, there's positives in this in the sense that Saul wasn't seeking this power and authority. Uh, he, as as often the case, is kind of an unexpected choice. Uh, he's a, not that important of a person beforehand. But I think more we're seeing the negative side here, that he has this deep insecurity about being in this position. I mean, what happens when you have a leader who doesn't really trust God or even really trust themselves? They tend to take things into their own hands, and then they have to feel like they need to fight back against every critique of them, even if it's a fair criticism. Right? What seemed like a show of strength is actually a sign of weakness. So can we recognize true strength and leadership? How much should we expect people to, or for God to work through people who aren't really trusting God in the first place?